went into a terrible depression like I'd never been before. Uh, and that's the first time I started, well, that, that suicide became an option. And so immediately I went into the hospital for the first time. I was getting ECT, shock treatments, and I'd get them twice a week. I think they made me too stupid to, <laughs> to be able to commit suicide, because that's what they do. They just wipe out your short-term memory. And I, it took me a long time to get skills back that I thought were pretty, uh, that, that were pretty strong. Talking to another person was near impossible. Went back to work a couple months after the hospitalization. But I still couldn't keep it together. I was good enough in what I was doing that I could do the work, but I couldn't, you know, uh, change my thinking. I couldn't see normal anymore. I couldn't see evenness anymore. It took a long time to figure out that the life I lived is not the life I'm going to continue living. I never thought I would end up here. I never thought I'd be a rich person. I never thought I'd be a poor person. So I feel humiliation about, you know, like going to a food bank or buying all my clothes at Goodwill, you know. Um, and one of my worst fears is that someday I'll end up in the street. You know, I had so much success as a young woman that I was so, disappointed and um, disturbed that I had no legacy at all. I mean, I'd be a footnote in the hospital chart maybe or, or, or something like that. And that just wasn't good enough. I needed more. I left one of the most blessed artists around. I mean, I don't have to work because I'm on SSDI. I don't have to work work on my art to make a living so I'm not washing dishes at night or whatever. <laughs> great studio, great location, free coffee. And I haven't been in the hospital since I started coming here.